There are few echoes at Vancouver's Rogers Arena of the spring, now 13 years ago, when the Canucks came achingly close to winning their first Stanley Cup. In a quiet corner underneath the stands, a small Stanley Cup Final 2011 placard still hangs below an emergency exit sign. Outside, a few blocks from the arena where Game 7 was shown on an outdoor screen to a large crowd of fans, there's no hint of the riot, during which police cars were set ablaze, that followed the 4-0 loss. Quinn Hughes, the 24-year-old Canucks captain and Norris Trophy favorite, was 11 when the Canucks blew 2-0 and 3-2 series leads in the 2011 final. His family lived in Toronto, where his dad worked for the Maple Leafs. I remember hearing about the aftermath of the loss, Hughes said. Noah Jew Olsen was 14, a Canucks fan who watched the games on TV with buddies on his block in Abbotsford, an hour east of Vancouver. He remembers the fervor of that spring. In Vancouver, Langley, Abbotsford, everyone was cheering for the team. The one real connection between then and today is on the ice midday at a late season practice, Henrik and Daniel Sardine. The two Hall of Famers these days work as player development coaches. At practice, as the Canucks sigh their first long playoff run in a long time, Vancouver plays host to Game 1 on Sunday night against Nashville, the Sidins fed the players pucks during drills and shoveled up snow from the goalie creases. This edition of the Canucks boasts ample experience in the Stanley Cup final. Problem is, none of it is on the ice. The Sedins know what it's like to almost lift the trophy. Rick Toshet, who's hiring as head coach in early 2023 turned around the flailing Canucks, has won cups in Pittsburgh as a player and an assistant coach. Team president Jim Rutherford helped lead Carolina and Pittsburgh to the top of the mountain. Except for the pandemic bubble summer of 2020, Hughes and young stars such as Elias Pettersson and goalie Thatcher Demko have never played an NHL postseason game. Toshet tried to keep it simple as the playoffs approached. No long meetings or big spiels about the playoffs. That's when people get antsy, Toshet said. He knows the experience behind the bench is valuable, but he isn't prone to locker room speeches about his cup experiences. He deploys such lessons more quietly. Personal stories, one-on-one, -on -one, or with a couple guys, are more meaningful, Toshet said. At the All-Star break the Canucks were tied for the best record in the league, far better than was predicted at the start of the season. Since then, results were more erratic but the team did win its first division title since 2013. A solid defense and strong goaltending yielded the fifth-fewest goals in the league and the Canucks were among the best teams on home ice. It's been a long time since the Canucks were relevant, in the city or across the country. In 2011, the powerhouse team had been on the rise for several years.